All right, joining me once again here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is my good friend, Mary Botari. Mary is the Deputy Director at the Center for Media and Democracy, which you can find at prwatch.org. Mary, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thanks for having me. All right, so Mary, uh, you live in Madison, Wisconsin, where the horrible, horrible human being, Scott Walker, is the governor. Like, I imagine most listeners are pretty familiar with his anti-union campaign, which of course led to the Wisconsin uprising. However, since then, countless investigations, many of them done by you guys at the at, at Center for Media and Democracy, have actually shown that Walker is not only anti-union and anti-democratic process, he also appears to be pretty damn corrupt. Um, why don't you tell us about some of the latest uh, of uh, Scott Walker corruption scandal stories? Okay, well, here in Wisconsin, we have an unusual law, and it's called the, a John Doe uh, investigation. And a John Doe investigation is like a grand jury, um, but instead of having a jury, the whole proceeding goes before a judge. And we found out um, in uh, recent uh, years that there have been two John Doe investigations going on involving Scott Walker. The first one was as he was running for governor, um, he was uh, he, different activities in his um, in his county office were being probed by the Milwaukee District Attorney and other investigators. And the allegation at that time was that the office and different various individuals in the office were using their public offices um, to fundraise. Um, uh, you know, inside the office, which is illegal here in the state of Wisconsin. And now we've recently found out that Walker's in the middle of a second John Doe probe with even more serious allegations. So, okay, the first one, you know, illegal fundraising. And so what's the, what's the new one? What did we, what did we just recently find out? In, in, and I just want to say in the first probe, nothing happened with regard to Scott Walker, but six of his staff and associates um, were charged and almost all of them uh, served time or probation or some type of um, uh, sanction. This uh, so we have, well, actually how, so like how did they, how did he get off essentially like how how did he how did he not it just just was it just uh, loyal underlings who just who just held on like the, like the mob you don't you don't rat is that what was going on or any, what actually happened anytime here? Anytime you're involved in a criminal investigation, any prosecutor has to have the goods. They have yeah. to have the emails or the taped conversations or the affidavits from underlings um, that get the boss in trouble. And I have to assume that the district attorney didn't feel like he had the goods uh, on the boss in this instance. And so, um, and so a, a number of underlings, including, you know, uh, loyal <laughs> county <laughs> staff who perhaps are, felt that, they, that, that this was what they were being asked to do, um, uh, served, had, had various degrees of penalties applied against them. Um, right. The new John Doe um, involves the re- period of the recalls. So Scott Walker busted the unions. Um, it led to historic recalls in Wisconsin. It wasn't just the governor and the lieutenant governor who were subject to a recall vote, but uh, an, at, at the time, an indeterminate number of senators were going to be recalled. It, it, it eventually, in this one period, resulted in six recall elections being held at the same time, and then later on, there were further recall elections. So here's Scott Walker and his team facing six recall elections, and so so they worked really hard to raise money. And now we've discovered that the um, special prosecutor who's been appointed to investigate this time period has uh, claimed that Scott Walker was at the center of a um, criminal scheme uh, to raise money uh, and uh, for these recalls in an undisclosed fashion. And the breaking news last week, um, so this is all very murky because a John Doe proceeding is happening behind closed doors. So we've known it was going on. We've known it involved Walker. We knew it involved a whole bunch of dark money groups like Wisconsin Club for Growth, who spent $9 million in the recall races, but all that money came from undisclosed sources. Um, we knew, you know, we knew sort of quite a bit about it, but we didn't know the actual specific allegations involving Walker. And we found out that the actual specific allegations are that he got on the phone 
and he raised millions of dollars, not just for himself in his own campaign account, which would be perfectly appropriate in the state of Wisconsin, but he raised millions of dollars for Wisconsin Club for Growth. And um, and the one of the leaked documents that came out of the John Doe was um, allegation after allegation of him either meeting with some millionaire and then the check going into the um, Wisconsin Club for Growth account the next day. Now, the problem with this here in Wisconsin is that we have a law against coordination between these types of issue ad groups and campaigns. You're not allowed to coordinate messaging. You're not allowed to coordinate expenditures. You're not allowed to coordinate those kinds of things because if you do, it's just like you're making a big contribution to the campaign itself. And if you're making a big contribution to the campaign itself under Wisconsin law, that has to be disclosed and it has to be reported and it has to be recorded so that the public can see it. So, so, so the, 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 these leaked documents show that he was coordinating with Wisconsin Club for Growth. Uh, who is, if people aren't familiar with Club for Growth and then, then specifically the Wisconsin chapter, what, what, give us, you guys, again, Center for Media and Democracy, you guys are all about who these people are and where, where the money's going. Who is behind uh, Club for Growth? So um, Club for Growth is one of these phony issue ad groups that jumps into an election and spends millions and millions of dollars on campaign ads, but they don't say vote for or vote against. So they're regulated differently at the federal level. They're regulated as sort of nonprofits, regulated by the IRS. You don't see their expenditures at the FEC. Um, so Club for Growth is one of the big ones, along with along with the Koch Americans for Prosperity groups. These are mm-hmm. these are two very large. Um, dark money groups. Club for Growth um, here in Wisconsin is run by two uh, two people. One is a guy named Eric O'Keefe, who is a shadowy right winger who um, um, who's been involved in a lot of um, right wing causes and libertarian causes over the years. He uh, has a long history of being friends um, with the Kochs and other um, uh, groups like that. Um, the director of the Club for Growth in Wisconsin, and the sort of the political director, is a guy named R.J. Johnson. And R.J. is a very important figure in Wisconsin because he's also Scott Walker's top political strategist. So what appears to be going on here is that Scott Walker's top political strategist, who was on the payroll of the campaign, um, who had for a long time been directing Wisconsin Club for Growth, was the center of this conspiracy to make sure that messages um, that, that the campaign commercials that were cut and the messages that were being sent out were the same, were coordinated, were done professionally, were done by the same, you know, TV and video groups and that kind of thing. So, you know, talk about coordination when you're, <laughs> when you're top guy, when your top campaign director is, the, um, is also directing the money or allegedly directing the money of this dark money group. That is a, that is a high level of coordination. 